Hi, I'm Chad Walquist. I'm an architect at Palantir. Today, we've got Zoe from Zygus. And thanks for joining me, Zoe. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so Zygus, like, okay, first, am I saying that right? And what do you guys do? Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely saying that right. Um, it is Zygus. Um, we are a startup, so we're Philia. We are um, a bit less than a year old at this point, And um, we work in the cybersecurity and data space predominantly. So we currently see one big problem in the whole security world, which is that data is very, very large, very, very complex, and it leads to two major issues. From our point, we have um, a lot of data sources that are very small, very big, but they're just many. And for any person, that's a lot to keep in your head. And if you want to work with it, it's really tricky to do. At the same time, it's also a lot of data. So it's really, really expensive. And companies are struggling to basically pay their way into security. And we're tackling both. So I guess, how did you, how did you kind of find Palantir and join the, the, the Palantir for Builders program? So for us, this is very much a security problem where you need to know what you actually have so you can protect it. And that means that ideally you have a lot of data sources flowing into that. And the more nowadays you have SaaS assets that frankly are part of your security perimeter, the more you need to know and the, the less it is enough to just look at your pure network and show what's going on there and determine based on that what your inventory is. So we turned and looked in the market and we said like, hey, listen, this is a really well suited to work with ERP systems, to work with what does the company have? How is their financial planning working? How is their internal organization utilization working? But the problem is, turns out then like ERP systems are really, really, really complex and they're really <laughs> tricky to deal with them. I've yet to yep. find an engineer that actually enjoyed that. So um, what we learned though is that Palantir is actually really, really good at doing that. Like really good at getting the important pieces of a business together in the form of data and automating that in their platform. And um, frankly, originally we did not think that that would be an option. Working with Palantir was not really something I think that most startups have on their, <laughs> um, on their agenda. Yep. And what we found was that Palantir is actually a shockingly good tool nowadays, even if you're like a, not a Fortune 500, even if you're a startup starting out. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So, so you said, uh, you know, the, the, the nice statement of Palantir is a shockingly good platform. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, what's, what's your favorite thing that you've kind of learned about Palantir as you start to get into it? <laughs> okay, let me, let me put a bit of context to this because I don't want yeah. the suit to come off wrong, but... Um, Right, if you, if you think about Palantir, you think about this like 300 pounds gorilla that you bring in if like there is a, there's a lot of red tape, there's a lot of regulation, there's like somebody that needs to cut through all of this. And um, that's what we first thought. But when we actually looked at it, it turned out that the internal tooling is pretty, pretty solid. That's, I think, the, the things that our team, especially internally from the engineering side, enjoyed so much. So um, we started out using Palantir Foundry and at the end, it was extremely easy to just get data in, build the connectors, build our own ontology that we needed to abstract something. And even, I think that was the part of the most shocking to us, build a very, very rapidly prototyping a front end in Palantir with a bunch of additional functionality from the classic data engineering work down to like AI magic sprinkled on top of it. It was extremely easy to through all of this, the developer experience was actually really, really stellar. And I think nobody expected that coming in. Yeah, yeah. It definitely was that kind of preconceived notion that it's a black box for just for the largest companies in the world. But uh, I think in the last year, year and a half, with our dev tier, our pounds are for builders program, I think a lot more people have access like, oh, wait, I can go get a stack in five minutes for free. Like, that's pretty cool. So you, you mentioned ontology as well. I love asking everybody because it's the, the term that gets thrown around. Very few people actually know what it means. You know, it's kind of memeable uh, in some sense. So like, what, what would be your take on the value of the ontology for you guys? I think um, for us, it was very easy to see because we've been dealing a lot with the semantics of data in general. So getting away from what is just producing data to what do you actually want to do with your data? What's the, the things to value it at? And um, we figured the ontology is actually very close to that as well. Um, so what it allows for us is to clearly define the data assets to really have this like 
object that is almost physical in representation that you can think of and yep. then how you transition from A to B, how things link together and like giving you that into a very visualized way, which made it frankly digestible for people that are not like the hardcore data scientists and that look in everything in tabular form. So yeah, then it allowed us a lot to, to show this to people and gauge the market a little bit. For us as a startup, at the end of the day, it's it's about speed. I need to get something out there, right? And it needs to be very quickly evaluated. Is that what the market wants and needs? And then I need to divert, go somewhere else. And that's, especially in the beginning, early days of a startup, that's key. And yeah. having the ontology and especially the tooling around it made it really easy to iterate and also get that in front of people and then make it live real quick see how the, the exposure is going, how the customers feel about it, reiterate again. Um, it just gives you a very, very solid foundation and you could feel that this was not just a whim, this is not just some like YOLO software that somebody has thrown together over the last like five months. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So I, I guess a question for you is, do we have something that you, you would be able to show us of like what you've built and maybe a little bit of the architecture? Yeah, I would like to um, show you a few things and um, also like reiterate like some of my points with all of that because I, I feel like that was the part that actually was frankly most valuable for us um, was not just the product itself but the building process. So um, we've been invited to Palantir's Dev Camp last year. It was a great experience and it was the first like really like hands-on hardcore building experience on Palantir for our engineers. and. Um, what this led to was basically we had three days to get something really cool going. And um, we started out actually with doing a planning session. And one of the things that, that we actually found extremely helpful and it was really fun for us was that, hey, planning in Palenty actually worked really nicely. So um, we sat down with some of the engineers and actually went over like what steps to take and how we want to get to there. So designing our ingestion pipelines, our ontology, and working through all of this was a really good experience, really great experience that was, I think, more well-rounded than we expected. Um, yeah. We didn't expect volunteer to be able to do a lot of those things. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, like I said before already, like speed is king. So within three days, we actually managed to create a device tracker for our inventory and tying that back together with ERP systems. And that was something that like worked really, really well. It was really good for us. So right now you can see um, what we have here is basically a dashboard that's completely running in Palantir's Foundry. So there is nothing here that is um, not built with the solution. So this was a really, really big thing for us because this allowed us now to see what's actually important. So what's the business outcome that I want to work towards? So I have a really good representation of the assets that I hold, where they are. I can work out the data that needs to flow and transform in the backend to make all of this happen. And actually like, let us build out the business case, which in our thing here, for example, is the work towards really optimizing how you use the assets you already have. And because oh, yeah. I know from a security angle, right, I know what devices you actually have, where they are, and I also know how much they're used, what they're doing, because that's very important. If I don't know what a device is doing, usually it's really hard to make sure that it's actually doing the right thing, and therefore it's secure. But that means there's a lot here that we can do for the normal business side. So in this case, for example, what we can see here um, is that Let's say we have Shadow IT, we have opportunities to move physical devices from locations where they are underutilized to locations where they are properly utilized because there's a shortage. Again, I know I've, I've, I've talked about this already a lot, but frankly, the, the dev tooling was really good. So building the, building the pipelines and building the ontologies from how we pull data in from our core systems, which they use a lot of. Spark, Databricks, and other cloud services in the back end. How do I get that into the system here? And how do I flow all of that through and actually build things that that map back into, for example, the ERP system? It was shockingly easy. 
it is it is really nice and I'm, I'm not going to lie obviously there, there's things especially for us that we see that need to be a bit better but that's yep. because our use case is special where we have petabytes in the very worst cases that come in a day so we need very specialized like processing what? and crunchiness to get through that and get it to the point where I can like really get the valuable insights and data quickly into Palantir here and then from there on out it flows really well that's um, awesome yeah, yeah I, I tell you what, we, we love the the perpetually dissatisfied customers because, uh, you know, people like you are the ones that are helping us push the platform that this improves it for everybody. So, like, uh, absolutely love that you're kind of pushing the edges of uh, the, the different tooling here. That's great. And, yeah, so so at the end of the day for us, this was a case of um, cool, like, the, the POC worked really fast. Like, it worked surprisingly well. And... Um, then the next step obviously was kind of okay cool like i have those pocs now like all the things that we talked about that i showed you before i have that but it's still in palantir i'm technically speaking not in the business of reselling palantir yep like or or am i so and this was the fun <laughs> part for us and this is a bit of the thing that we really didn't expect either um is just the, the solution on the back end very scalable um I cannot necessarily sell this because it's not really the thing that is us. So yep. we obviously went on the road, okay, cool, we need our own um, interface for this. And um, when we actually had enough prototyping done here and figured out, cool, that is what the market needs, um, we actually went towards, started building more of our own stuff. So as you can see here, um, this is our current semantic layer, that's our platform, that's our style, that's how our, our things look, the vibes. And um, this is the inventory product. So this is our own front end that's built in front of it. But all of this here is still powered by Palantir. So what we're using is we're using the SDK in the back end to actually just access the data, access our ontology, and make the same queries that we did over on the actual founder workspace. I think that's some of the power of the ontology SDK is you get that scalability, you get that security uh, that you can move fast. And then like, honestly, too, building with the ontology SDK, I find very fun just because I'm like, if I built that ontology, as you said, to like represent the real ground truth, like I'm programming with objects that are like the ground truth. So like even building interfaces like this, I find to be more fun because of that, like, the common like language of that I'm programming essentially in kind of business language. So how many people like just curious from like a size you're building all this out. This is impressive. Like how many people do you have working on this? Oh, so this was actually again, um, funnily enough, we had two people at the um, dev camp. So all of the POC work was done within three days with two engineers and some some support from your end, obviously. Yeah. Everything down the road was um, on our side, just one engineer because the, the tooling was already there. There was less to do um, on the actual backend side. Obviously, some of the things we make easier because we can handle the data really, really well. But a lot of the tricky parts that normally need to have a lot of like front and backend people working in tandem and a larger team, we didn't really need because the dev tooling was there. And the a lot of the actual work here we could externalize to, hey, here's here's the front end that we already built. Just translate that into our design language and build it. That's a lot easier to do than um, yeah. starting from scratch. That's awesome. Well, Zoe, thanks for the time today. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. It was a pleasure being with you.